everybody. So I had a really good question that was asked by a viewer you know, about the tracker knife. And the question was why if this design was meant to have a small companion knife like a Mora, then why wouldn't you just take a Mora and a saw or a Mora and an axe? And that's a really good question. So I'm going to try and answer it as unbiasedly and honest as I can. This knife is never going to replace a hatchet or an axe for chopping ability. It's never going to replace a fillet knife for the ability to fillet a fish. It's never going to replace a silky saw for the ability to saw. This is meant to be a one tool option, yes, but it also typically includes a small knife as well. Now, what this is meant to do is so that you don't have to carry an axe or a silky saw or those other things if you don't want to. You know, like today, we're out fishing in, uh, I would, I mean, it's kind of a backcountry location. It's pretty obvious that some people come out here regularly and do this. But, you know, you have to park your vehicle and you have to hike for a while to get here. So, I didn't think I was going to need an axe or need a silky saw, so I didn't bring them. Also, this is something I like to keep on my person with my belt kit. It's a lot easier to keep this on my person than it is a silky gomboy or a hatchet or even an ax if I don't want to. You know, this will stay there and this will stay on me and it's a lot easier to carry around. So, and it is super useful. That's the thing is, is it's not, it's not super great at any one particular task other than um, it's a phenomenal fire knife. You know, I really, uh, I would argue that in my opinion, this is the best knife there is for building a fire. You know, the tracker style knife, a good tracker style knife. There's some phony designs out there that they're awful. They don't make curls properly and they're not really trackers. They just try to make it look like one and use the name. But real tracker style knives, these, the, the Dave Becks. There's a few other ones out there that I'm particularly interested in. The, the Bark River looks like a really good one. Ed Martin has one. Uh, there's several of them. So to answer that question, no, this is never going to replace those particular items. And if you're going into a tropical situation and you want to bring a machete, I would go ahead and bring a machete. Me personally, I've cut down trees with a machete and I'd rather have this. Uh, trying to chop down a, a tree with a machete because you didn't bring a heavy chopper like an, a hatchet or one of these or an axe or some other large heavy chopping blade like a kukri. Uh, I, I did not enjoy that. First time I cut down a tree with a machete, I was 12 years old-ish, 12-ish, 11-ish. Anyways, it was in Alba, Texas, and I used to go out in the woods behind where we lived and get lost for all day if I could, but... And, but yeah, I remember I found a machete the first time. I was like, huh, I bet I could chop a tree down with this. So, you know, that being said, I've seen somebody beat, I haven't done it myself, but I have definitely seen someone beat this knife through a tree about that big around. And it took it, and it took that tree down. And I've watched people take one of these and whittle away at a tree about that big around. And took the whole, excuse me, and took the whole tree down. So... These are much better for chopping than a machete if you need some weight and you need some chopping action. Uh, it's never going to be as good as an axe or even a hatchet, but this is a lot easier to carry than a hatchet or an axe or a tomahawk. I prefer tomahawks over hatchets most of the time. Um, and the other thing is, is 
Amora really is kind of a big knife. Uh, if I'm already carrying this, I don't need a Mora. I don't need it. I don't need a fixed blade. I have this one. So I like it because I can have my everyday carry on me, throw this and my belt pouch on, which I have done a video on it. I changed up the configuration for it a little bit for this outing. I might do a video on that uh, in the morning or something before we leave. So my everyday carry knife is this little guy. It's a CRKT. I don't remember what it's called, but it's an assisted opening knife with a very fine point on it. I have this knife as a weapons retention knife in case someone tries to take my gun. I have something to fight them off and keep my gun. And it's also a very good little knife for delicate everyday tasks. I could gut a fish with this, no problem. I could cut a, gut a deer with this. You know, I could skin a squirrel with it. It's a good little knife. Is it my preferred skinning knife? No. Uh, I'll do a video on that one later. But if I already have my EDC knife on with me, adding this, that's a heck of a lot smaller than a Mora weighs a lot less and it's pretty much always in my pocket so if you're going into a specialized environment take you specialized equipment but keep this too put it on your belt this will stay with you at all times for an emergency situation what if you get separated from your main kit if you got a big saw or an axe you know it's gonna be on your pack it's not gonna be on your belt you know, the perfect saw to pair with this and like a belt kit, in my opinion, would be like the Silky Pocket Boy. Something small, you know. That'd be a good saw to have with this if you wanted a dedicated saw. That'd be a really good everyday, well, I wouldn't say everyday, but that'd be a good like wilderness walkabout kit right there, in my opinion. A little folder, maybe a Leatherman, maybe a sack, Swiss Army knife, I don't, you know. This thing and a Silky Pocket Boy, hell yeah. But this knife is way, like, it's for the creative mind. I really like it. That's one of the reasons I love this knife is because it was really designed for a creative mind. You could come up with so many different ways to use this thing. I've seen people use it like this as an ulu for fleshing a hide. You know, I've seen people do some pretty amazing things with it. I've done a lot with mine. And I'm going to start showing y'all tutorials on how to do some basic tasks. Um, I like Dave Canterbury's stuff a lot. Um, he doesn't, him and his people, they kind of usually frown upon knives like this. I'm not going to fault them for that. That's their system. You know, I don't think his system's the perfect system. I don't think, you know, Gray Bearded Green Beret's system is the perfect system. I like both of them. I like their schools. And I think that even Cody Lundeen. You know, Cody Lundeen has an interesting system. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think anyone has a perfect survival system. But there's so much to learn out there. I don't fault people who don't like this knife. I like it. I think that there's plenty of people that like it, and it's a great knife. It allows you to be super creative with your techniques. So we're going to go through some of that stuff. I'll shoot videos. Uh, the idea is going to be basically to shoot videos on the the five projects, I think it was, the five basic projects that Dave Canterbury says you should do if you're learning how to use a knife. We're going to go through them with this knife and show you how to do that. You can, you know. We'll, car we'll carve a tri-stick with it, you know. We'll start out simple and we'll work our way up. Hopefully one day, if the time allows and the situation allows, I actually would like to do a hunted survival kit review where, we, where we're going to put together the survival kit that dude used in the movie The Hunted, which we're going to use some common sense and we're going to analyze the footage and as much as YouTube will allow me without violating copyrights or what have you, and we're going to figure out exactly what he would have had 
on and off camera for that type of a period correct military survival kit. So hopefully we'll get to do that one day and test it out and see if it would work. Maybe some other ones, other videos like that. But for now, we'll start with the basic projects and the outings and stuff that we're currently hunts and fishing that we're currently doing. So anyways, guys, y'all have really responded well to this knife. If you check the video, the last one I did on this knife, guys, look through the comments, man. People got some very creative ideas for things to do with this knife. How to use it as a draw knife for a bow. You know, there is a huge community and following behind this knife, that, and they love to share information and share tricks and tips with this knife. So if you have a tracker, get involved. Find other people, other channels that have trackers and use them, you know. Don't pay attention to the people that just badmouth it and never even really gave it a chance or don't really understand what makes a tracker knife a tracker knife and say that, oh, well, this isn't a real tracker knife or that or this and that, you know. Stay out of those zealot, you know, these people who are like super religious about their knives and stuff where they follow certain people and like that, you know, like a cult leader, you know, and it's like, man, stay away from them people. Think for yourself, give stuff a try and learn from the people who are willing to share the information, okay? So guys, it's never gonna replace a saw, it's never gonna replace a hatchet, and honestly, I wouldn't even take a Mora. I wouldn't want something, if I'm taking even a fixed blade, I'd want something like a very small Puko. So, uh, tops, if y'all ever watch this video, I would love to see a set with this, and y'all's Tanamboka Puko like matched finish wise and in a, a sheath set. That would be flipping cool. I never liked that scout knife that y'all made for it. It just, I don't like the grind or, or the shape or the handle. But that Tanamboka Puko with this, man, that would be wicked. So, anyways, guys, thanks so much for all the views and the support, the subscriptions. You guys are great. And, um, love y'all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.